Hey guys, how you all going? It's your boy Scotty and it's been a massive week for the Brisbane Roar. So this week's been huge. We've had signings galore, we've had the FFA Cup draw and also we've got some membership news so I'm going to be here to bring it all to you right now. So we've got to shout out the social media team because they've had an amazing idea coming up with like a destination arrival type thing like the airport has where we knew we were going to bring in a lot of players and the first one that it said on the Monday when they first came out it says manager Liverpool landed. So that was Robbie Fowler landing and it also said forward Ireland and today. So that one everyone really knew who that was going to be. It was Roy O'Donovan and yeah so we'll get into some information about Roy now. So most people remember who Roy O'Donovan is. If you don't remember all the players that I mentioned in this video, most of the players that I did mention in my Transfer Rumor video actually was announced this week. So I'll put a little annotation on the screen somewhere in the top corner and then you can go click on that if you haven't watched that already because you should go watch that before you watch this one. But um, yeah, so Roy O'Donovan used to play for Central Coast Mariners for a few seasons and then moved to Newcastle Jets. He's got a really good goal scoring record, like a lot of people are thinking, oh, he's 33 years old, or he'll be 33 time season starts, is he going to be a really good player for us? And I mean, he's experienced in the A-League, he's got a good scoring record, and along the, along the same type of scoring record as the likes of McLaren and Borussia and stuff like that, and Taggart. So, I mean, Taggart wasn't around for the whole season, but Taggart got 11, 11 goals in 18 games, or however, how many games he played, so... It's about the same as what Roy Donovan got because he didn't play all of last season because of um, the suspension that he served at the start of the season from when he kicked Lawrence Thomas in the head in the grand final last uh, season before. But he'll definitely be a quality player for us and experience with the top. Possibly have Mar uh, Marky. I'll put up a news story. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put a photo up on the screen here and that will sort of show the uh, the news article I read where it said O'Donovan was the marquee. I haven't heard any more news about O'Donovan being the marquee, so maybe, possibly... The only reason he will be marky though is because we've got so many players, even though he may not be at marky level or in marky funds, it's just so then, because he's probably worth 400, 500k for the two seasons he's here, or however much it normally would be, he's probably not that marky wage, but just so then we can get more players into the squad that's at a cheaper rate, because having someone that's 400 or 500k, even though yes they probably would be under the cap, it just has a, it doesn't it doesn't let us have as many players inside the cap so that's probably the only reason why he's there he probably you know, we probably won't have a proper marquee this season unfortunately just because of the amount of players that we're having to bring in but next season's probably we're going to have a massive marquee i hope that Robbie Fowler brings in so the next day we had three players being announced we had a defender from the UK we had a four from Wales and we had another defender from England so the first player that was announced was Tom Eldridge and he was also announced in the article that was first came out where it said Roy Donovan and Eldridge was going to be the first two signings that Robbie Fowler brought in and obviously it was. So uh, Eldridge is a quality player from Motherwell, is a really tall figure at the back, can score goals from corners and stuff as well. So I definitely, realize, I definitely reckon that he'll be an amazing player for us to bring in and a quality at the back that we definitely need to hopefully not concede so many amount of goals again and really do really well in the tournament. So our second signing was Aaron Amadi Alloa. So a lot of people weren't sure if he's going to be good. On stats and on paper, his goal scoring record is terrible. He doesn't have very many goals for game ratio. And this is one of the players that actually weren't in my transfer rumor video. It actually came out, the story came out about us signing him after that. So, because my transfer video was about two weeks ago, the story came out about a week ago saying that Amadi Alloa was going to be signing. And a lot of people thinking, why do we need two foreign strikers? We've got uh, Dylan Windsor Halls and we've got O'Donovan. And it, even if Fallon wants to play two up front, which is looking likely, he'll either play either 3-5-2, 5-3-2, or 4-4-2. If he's got two foreign players, it looks like that he'll probably play two foreign players at the top because you don't think that he would sign a foreign player and then bench them. So, yeah. But in saying that, Amadi Alloa hopefully can revive his career over here and do really well. And hopefully under Fowler, Fowler obviously sees something for him. And because he was actually on contract, we didn't get him for free. He's obviously paid money for him. He's, off, he's probably definitely going to be in the plans of Fowler, so I'd say that he'll definitely be probably starting most games, so hopefully he can bring some life to the Roar and be an amazing signing for us. Obviously, stats don't lie that he doesn't look the best, but in saying that, when Broish and Borussia came in part of Lou, they weren't very big-name players and didn't have a very good record, but look what Ange has brought to the team and brought brought the Roar family and the Roar community, those amazing players, so hopefully Fowler can do that again for Marty Alloway. Also... Marty Alloway could also play centre-back, apparently. So it's a bit of a weird versatility to have a striker that can play centre-back. Who knows, though, if that, that might come out in our way, in our favour, that he might play O'Donovan and, and um, Wenzel Halls up top and then have Marty Alloway at the um, centre-back. So who knows what will happen, but it'll be definitely an interesting signing, and hopefully he can do well under Fowler. 
And our third signing that day was Macaulay Gillespie, a centre-back or a left-back from England. This one sort of came out of nowhere and nobody knew where this was going to happen. And as soon as he saw the graph, I'm like, I thought we were only going to be signing one international defender, which was uh, Eldridge. But then we have England defender and we're like, oh, which one is which? Like, Eldridge is English, but he's played for Scotland. So which one is he going to be? And then we found out that he was going to be the UK signing, so we knew we were going to be signing an English defender. There was also talk that the English defender was going to be Scott Neville, seeing that he was born over in England, but played for Socceroos and played all for the youth level. Anyway, I don't think he's played for the actual Socceroos team, but obviously he wouldn't be counted as a visa player saying he wasn't for Perth Glory in the past. But yeah, so that's the signing there, Macaulay Gillespie, and he's going to be a, probably a quality player for us. He's probably above Pepper's level, not as good as Eldred, but... He's only young and definitely will probably play a versatile role in our team, either playing at left back or a centre back, because I do believe we'll play a 3 5 2, meaning we'll have three centre backs, two wing backs, slash right mid, left mid, three across the middle with maybe two holding midfielders and attacking midfielder, and then two up front. Or we might play a little bit deeper with five at the back with our right wing back and our left wing back defending a lot more and not going forward as much, because I mean, five behind the ball with. Three, five quality defenders shouldn't leak 71 goals. So, I don't know. The, the plan is Fowler, when he did his UEFA Pro license, he had a lot of, like, favour going for a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2. So that might be what we want to see, that he might want to see. But I definitely know he wants to play two up front. And we have signed two foreign strikers, plus we've got Dylan Wenzel Hall. So if he doesn't play two up front, well, two strikers anyway, I'll be very surprised. So Macaulay Gillespie definitely will be a great player for us. He's young. And he's from the English League 2, I believe, or English League 1. But in saying that, um, the English League 2 and the English League 1 is... English League 1 is probably a lot better than the um, A-League. English League 2 is probably about par with the A-League. Maybe like maybe the top teams in the A-League will do well in the League 2. I know it's definitely a different type of league over there. A lot more fast-paced and more rough and aggressive. So hopefully we can definitely see them bring some of those traits to the A-League. And the fact that Macaulay Gillespie can play left back as well also gives us an option there as well because for me, one of the signings that we made today and I'm making this video on the Thursday after all the signings have been announced was, I'll get to it in a soon and I'll mention it, but one of the players we did sign is normally a winger but could potentially play out as a wing back for us but we've also got O'Toole there and then Powell on a scholarship deal. So the next day was a midfielder or a defender from Australia and I thought for sure the midfielder was either going to be O'Neill. Mel's or Inman. It was one of them, it was Mel's. And the defender that I thought for sure, because we, at that stage we were only linked with two other defenders. One of them was only the day before, and I'm like, surely he's not going to be announced the next day, which was Jake McGing and Scott Neville. So Scott Neville was announced for like linked for about a week now, and I realised that he actually hadn't been released from Perth yet. But earlier on, later on that day, he did get released from Perth. So I'm like, oh, surely he's going to be Scott Neville signing now. And I'm waiting for ages. When is the rule going to announce this signing? And normally they do it separately, but for some reason they decided to do it both on the same picture, on the same post, which was Jake McGing and George Mills. So Jake McGing has played right back recently for Central Coast Mariners, and he also got a move to Poland, but has left there since then. But before that, he also has played centre-back. So I definitely can see him playing as a centre-back for us, just because that we've already got Hingit, which may not be fit for the start of the season. We may see him at right back, Jake McGing. But if Scott Neville signs, I feel like Scott Neville will sign at right back for cover for Hingit, but when Hingit comes back, I feel like he'll be our captain, potentially Jamie Young otherwise, and I feel like Jake McGing probably will be used more of as a centre-back, so I think McCauley, Gillespie, and Tom Eldridge will be used as our, definitely our two centre-backs, and then it will probably be Jake McGing slash um, Scott Neville, because Scott Neville could also play centre-back, and Jacob Pepper fighting for that third centre-back spot, because it's Jake, uh, Jacob Pepper actually got announced today, which is Thursday, as he's renewed his contract. So a lot of people were thinking, is that a good move? Is that a, is that a bad new move? So Jacob Pepper is one of the players where I really didn't enjoy watching him play when he was playing in the midfield. And when he got put in the back, it was a bit shaky at the start, but he really come to know that position really well. And I feel like that's his best position for him. I feel like he's going to be a brilliant player that we would have off the bench if need be, if there's an injury at the back or injury in the midfield. Even though he's not a brilliant midfielder, he's definitely a good squad player to have. I definitely see him being more of a squad player this year instead of a more of a starting defender or a starting team player 
probably a good bench competition for us, and I'm glad that we've signed him for another year. So our final two signings were today, which was Brad Inman and Aiden O'Neill. So Brad Inman, these are probably our two more exciting signings for us for so far this season that we've had when we've had multiples on the same day. So Brad Inman has played over a lot over in England, hasn't actually played over in Australia, even though he is Australian, and um, he's normally a winger or an attacking midfielder. He's actually played um, centre mid as well. But I can definitely see him lining up on left mid or left or left wing or left wing back for us, or possibly even on the right side because I mean we've got Hingit and O'Neill. I uh, think sorry Hingit and Neville. But I'd say I definitely don't think he'd play on the right. But he possibly could be giving us an option there if they do want to go with um O2 or left wing, uh, left wing back or left back or left mid or whatever. Or I can definitely see him playing in the midfield. So he's def definitely a versatile midfielder that will probably bring us hopefully a lot of goals and a lot of assists. Even though he hasn't got that good of a scoring record, he is a very versatile player that can play in one position. So I definitely think he'll be a quality player and a starter for us. In my transfer room video before, though, I did say that he probably wouldn't start for us. But that's when I was thinking that Bowler was going to announce as our marquees as to be two wingers. And I thought, we've already got some midfielders that we're going to be signing. I didn't think he'd be a player that we'd start. But now it looks like O'Neill, I'm sorry, not O'Neill, O'Donovan, so many O's in the team. We've got O'Neill, O'Donovan, O'Till, and possibly a marquee that's somewhat been linked, possibly may sign. Hopefully he does, because he'll be a quality player for us, is Jay O'Shea. And I'll put a photo up here of the photo that someone did tweet, but then deleted because they probably thought, oh no, I can't put that up. So apparently Jay O'Shea is local, lives local to the guy that posted this, and he has mentioned him to him maybe that he's going to be signing for the Raw, but probably he wasn't meant to post it, but he did. And I got a screenshot of it before he deleted it, so hopefully he does come out because he was in FIFA's team of the season for the English League 2 last season, so if that anything to go by, he does score a lot of goals for an center attacking midfielder. Hopefully bring some more creativity to the team, and that will probably be our second marquee player alongside O'Donovan. If it was O'Donovan the sign, we haven't actually heard any news yet on who our marquee is, but I feel like it will be O'Donovan O'Shea. And the last player that I haven't really got into yet is Aiden O'Neill. Player for Central West Mariners last season was their player of the year with four goals from a holding midfielder slash centre mid. Apparently he is more of an attacking midfielder or a box-to-box -box than a CDM, but was played a lot in the holding midfielder for um, Central Coast Mariners last year, but definitely a quality signer for us, and hopefully will bring a lot of more versatility and, and holding down our midfield, as well as bringing some attacking flair to our midfield as well. So definitely a brilliant signing. It is on a season loan from Burnley, and it is his last season at Burnley, but it's thought that they will extend his contract by at least another year. And if he is a great player for us, I would love to see us sign him on a permanent deal or another loan. But in saying that, he'll definitely be a great player for us in our midfield and hopefully control our game a bit like a Bratton player. So that is all the signing news we've had. We've had eight signings come where we've signed a few midfielders, a few defenders, and a few attackers. So our team is on 16 players now. So I'll go through who is signed for us now. Okay, so at this stage, we've only got one goalkeeper because Brendan White left. And Macklin Frick, I hope, does get an upgrade for either... He was either a youth team player or a scholarship player. I do hope he does get a professional contract, even though he will be probably number two behind Jamie Young for sure, because he is definitely our best keeper we've got at the club. So Jamie Young and hopefully Macklin Frick will sign, but currently it's only Jamie Young. I know a lot of teams in other clubs have got three goalkeepers, but in saying that, for the last few seasons, we've already had only two goalkeepers. And the only other goalkeeper we've had is if there is an injury or a suspension to our goalkeeper, which Jam Young was last year, McElfrey came into the bench and Brendan White came into the team. Either McElfrey was either on a scholarship deal or a youth deal last year, he wasn't actually signed on a professional contract. I do believe we probably only need two goalkeepers because one of our other players definitely could be a squad player for in other positions that we want to have in our 23-man squad. We don't really need three goalkeepers in our, in our 23-man squad. So our defenders, we've got currently, we've only got one right back on cards, which is Jack Hingit, but Jake um, Jake McGing also can play right back. So we've sort of got two, but I definitely can see us playing five at the back or three at the back with two wing backs. So Jake McGinn might slot into a centre back role there or, or a wing back role. And with the likelihood of Scott Neville signing soon, I definitely can see Jake McGinn playing more of his time at centre back. Some of our other centre backs we've got is Tom Eldridge and Macaulay Gillespie which I also said before, can play left back, so it does give us a lot of versatility at the back with our signings we've made. We've also got Daniel Bowles, which I think signed a deal with a... He triggered a release, uh, triggered a contract renewal by playing 10 or so games last year. And also we've got Daniel So we've got Daniel Bowles, uh, Aaron Reardon and Jacob Pepper, which actually was named in the article on Aiden Neal, Ozan Neal's 
signing as a midfielder. So who knows if we're going to see him more as a midfielder this season. I definitely hope not. But in saying that, he's definitely a great squad player to have. And our last defender is O'Toole, Connor O'Toole, left back. And I hope he's fit for the start of the season because he was definitely playing really well before. But in saying that, we um, have Brad Inman who can play left wing back, left mid, left back, hopefully, if we have that attacking role. Because I definitely can't see us playing four at the back. It will either be three or five. So it's definitely going to be either more of a free-flowing midfield and a free-flowing attacking game and hopefully a lot more attacking players being signed even though we've signed a lot of defenders in this transfer window. And then obviously we've got Isaac Powell who is a scholarship player. I would like to see us upgrade his contract to an actual first-team player because this only brings us to 16 players and we can have 23. And with the two signings possibly of Jay O'Shea and Scott Neville that will bring it to 18 so we still have another five slots to play and bring in players. So... Let's hope we can see a lot of youth players being brought into the top team and hopefully Isaac Powell is one of those. So in the midfield, we've got Brad Inman, Stefan Mork, George Mills, Aidan O'Neill and Jacob Pepper, which I think is more of a defender. So Stefan Mork is basically going to be a new signing for us because he only played like five games last season and he was quality in those five games. He definitely ran the midfield. I feel like this year he'll probably be back to more of his uh, Adelaide United days where he played more of a holding midfielder or not, not a holding but a box-to-box -box midfielder. Especially if we do sign Joe O'Shea. Both of them are interchangeable. They both can play attacking mid. They both can play centre mid. So I definitely think our midfield will be a lot more lively and quick. And hopefully bring that X-Factor flair that Holman would have brought if he wasn't injured the whole season. George Mills is more of a squad type player. A bit like a, a Joe Coletti. Who, not, not as his game style, but off the bench. A few starts here and there. He will probably bring a lot more of a Jacob Pepper style to him where he does the job, probably doesn't do the job as well as some other players, but definitely be a great player for us to sign and has had that experience over in Europe. So he does have that potential, even though he didn't get a lot of game time over there, if any. Brad Inman, I've talked about before, obviously a quality player that can play a lot of positions and hopefully can bang in some goals for us and get some assists and possibly could be our Eric Boatsyak that's Australian. Aiden O'Neill definitely are going to be a quality player for us and I can definitely see him starting most of our games. A bit like uh, Lopez last year that can play everywhere across the midfield and hopefully be that player that's very versatile across the midfield that can bring a lot of flair into our team. And then we've got Jacob Pepper, which obviously I said before isn't really a great player in the midfield but can do the job at centre-back and definitely hopefully will be a squad player this season. And our last three players that we've got is Aaron Marty Alloway. Roy O'Donovan and Dylan Windsor Halls. So Roy O'Donovan definitely will start up top for us. He probably will be our marquee man and hopefully we'll bang in a lot of goals and also probably assist some players with two up front. We probably hopefully assist and have a good partnership between either Dylan Windsor Halls or Amadi Alloway, which I can definitely see him probably going the latter because he probably brought in a player foreign. He probably will start him, especially if he played a transfer fee for him. But in saying that, Windsor Halls definitely will get time off the bench. Possibly will play out wide at times as well because with pride as well he played out wide as a winger and definitely did really well there so I definitely am very excited for the team this season to see how we do well and uh, hopefully we do well and yeah also this is the last video we've lost two players we've lost Dane Ingham which is a right wing back right back right winger which we've also brought in basically Scott Neville which we possibly will bring in and Jake McGing and so that we sort of cover them off already and with um, Amadi Alloway and Roy Donovan signing, uh, Nick D'Agostino probably wouldn't have gotten a lot of game time, so he was moved on by Robbie Fowler as well. Both of them have since have moved to Perth Glory, so good luck to them. Hopefully you do well there, but not too well against the rule, because that's our team, guys. <laughs> if you're going to score, don't score against us. But yeah, definitely will be a, a good, exciting season for us to see how we do. I can hopefully, I hope that we see some youth players brought up to either scholarship deals or first-team deals with the likes of uh, Macklin Freck, Isaac Powell to Ashwell's first team deal because I, I definitely know he is one player that we do have on a scholarship. Also, Wells Moore, he's a youth fullback for New Zealand, so hopefully he does get brought up to a scholarship deal at the least. Uh, we've also got Mirza Muradovic, uh, Durante Mariner, also good quality players in the youth league. Also, Kai Truen, Bryce, oh, actually, Bryce Baffert, I think, is left now, but. Um, yeah, so definitely some good players that we just might see bring into the youth team and hopefully bring that youth flair if they are given an opportunity. Akbari as well. He was signed from... So I would, he was loaned, apparently, to Melbourne Victory and then brought back. And then now he's definitely at least an NPL player. I don't know if he's been signed as a youth player. I think it's just an NPL player. Not as a scholarship deal yet, but I can definitely see him getting the further deal in the future. So now we move on to the second point of this video. I'll just touch on it slightly. It's the FFA Cup draw, which was announced on the Wednesday night at 7.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. 
and we have been drawn against what do you know another A League team, the second person drawn out of the second team drawn out of the pot against Sydney FC away. Where does our luck come in the FFA Cup? We never have any good teams. We never play any players teams that aren't A League team. I swear, like the first team that we apparently played in the FFA Cup was a team in Perth that's an NPL team. But it's been a long time coming since we've got an NPL team, and I definitely think I have a lot of people on Twitter saying that it should be changed. All the teams should be put in the same pot, and that sort of gets the A League teams to have more A League teams go through. Because if the, if it's if it's about the FFA and the money and the draw cards and the attendance to games, obviously they want to see the A League teams do well. But if it's about FFA Cup stories where the NPL teams take on an A League team and beat them, or if it's about the MPL, MPL teams pushing further in the cup, then yeah, fair. But a way for the FFA Cup to have real magic, they should have a chance to play any team. So there could be lots of teams, A-League teams playing lots of A-League teams, or there could be lots of MPL teams playing MPL teams, or lots of A-League versus MPL teams, because having a guarantee of three A-League games, uh, three A-League teams versus an A-League team, so six A-League teams versus each other, it sort of takes away from the chance of like, a league teams going far because we know that three of them definitely going to be knocked out. So, just a thought that hopefully they can change in the future. I definitely love the idea of the FFA Cup with lots of cap teams and NPL teams and BPL teams having a chance to get to this stage and play A league teams and possibly if they do well be scouted and signed by an A league team. So it's definitely a, a great concept. I just think the when it once it gets to a, um, the round of thirty two, they all should be drawn out the same pool and hopefully by doing that next year. Rule will sign a uh, rule draw a uh, MPL team, but in saying that, it is a new team. It's not the Eloise team, it's the Fowler team. So this is a, definitely a good time for us to say, this isn't the Eloise team. This is the Fowler team, and we can do well against the NFC. We're going to beat them away from home, and that will definitely be a massive draw card for fans and stuff to come out and hopefully sign memberships and be a part of the Royal family for the nineteen twenty season. So by saying that with the membership and bringing fans in from doing well in the FFA Cup as well as some preseason games that we do have against Redlands and another team I can't remember. But both of them are at Logan, and then there's another game in Gladstone against the Gladstone number uh, Gladstone eleven, and that is the membership. And there is a lot of talk about yes, it's cheaper, but the reason it's cheaper is because it's less games at Suncorp. For me, I live on the north side. I love the idea of having a Dolphins, a Redcliffe Dolphins, three games at Redcliffe Dolphins, and the fact that we are hoping to get a boutique stadium because a Suncorp stadium where it's only like ten thousand, eleven thousand. For 15,000 probably at the most for most A League games, uh, like for a 52,000 seater stadium compared to a, a full house for three games at Dolphin Stadium where they hold 10,000 stadium, 10,000 seats, is definitely going to be something that we really should turn out in numbers. I know that a lot of people are thinking you're going to lose a lot of fans from the south side or team people that come from sunny coast or something that have to drive further or however far they've got to drive. But in saying that, if we want to have a boutique stadium, this is definitely where we can show the club that. Having a 10,000 seat stadium or a 15,000 seat stadium is definitely a lot better than having it at Suncorp. And I, for, for some of the reason that it's a lot to rent Suncorp Stadium, so they've brought three games to Dolphin Stadium. Also for the fact that at Dolphin Stadium, where they had the FFA Cup and some women's games last season, it was really good and turn, fans really turned out. And I'm just really excited to see us hopefully turn out in numbers, have three A-League games there where it's competitive for points and hopefully have a full house and show the club that we deserve a boutique stadium but hopefully with it, if they do it it is central in the city so there is no complaints from south side people and north side people it's central where Suncorp is sort of similar to the that central milton area but have a smaller stadium just for the rule so a great thing they have done so people don't argue saying i'm not gonna buy a membership now they have three games at redcliffe they have got a suncorp stadium membership where you can just buy the suncorp stadium membership for the 10 games or if you are the person that doesn't like going to Suncorp but live on the north side want to see only a few games, there is Dolphin Supporter Stadium membership. And it's not called that, it's called Dolphin Stadium membership. And that's for three games. And all the prices are very, uh, very, very good for the amount of money you get. So for the full membership where you have the full season where you're at Suncorp and Redcliffe, it's $255 from that for an adult. And that works out just under $20 a game. So... It is very uh, very good. There also is a club's uh, coaches club membership, and we will hear about that soon. I think the memberships come out on the 9th of July, and from from that time, members have from the 9th of July to the 9th of August to renew their same seats. After the 9th of August, that's where it sort of goes. Anyone can pick their seats. So if you're not between the between that time, you're sort of thinking, should I get membership? Should I not? 
you will see it from last season will still be there if you buy it between the 9th of July and 9th of August, but just know after the 9th of August, that's when it will go. So um, that's basically wraps up all my information that I've been wanting to cover for this video. Uh, all the information, all the all the information that I've talked about with the transfer news and some of the membership deals and some other stuff that I've talked about will be in the description. And yeah, so I hope you like this video. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, and I'm out. Peace. I ain't close doors, I'm a fool for your love